purpose of deploying an Aegis seal, I've got my uh, field demo set up here, and a sheath is already inserted into my fake vessel down there. Um, assuming that this is a patient head on my left, and we have right femoral access. So first I prepare everything that I'm gonna need. So I get my wire, I get it, the cheater advanced to the tip. <clears throat> this, is the, uh, this is the sheath. The sheath is a six or eight French. It's a modified sheath. Modified means it has no sidearm. It's not necessary for this procedure, but it is uh, hemostatic. So it has a um, hemostatic valve here at the top. At the tip of the sheath, it has what we call uh, a modified uh, tip. You can see that little indention right there. Uh, and I'll show you uh, later why that's necessary. When the anchor plate is extended into the vessel with the first click of the device, the second click pulls it up snugly to the bottom of the sheath, and this monofold aligns it uh, longitudinally with the sheath and fixes it. This is the dilator. The dilator has Two small holes, one on each side towards the distal end. These holes will uh, line up with holes inside the modified sheath when they're positioned together. There's an arrow at the top of the hand grip and there's an arrow at the top of the sheath. For uh, proper assembly, these two arrows need to come together. So when you insert, and you do not have to flush this prior to the procedure, you can if you want to, the connection is made arrow to arrow and you should click them together okay you should be able to hear it but you'll definitely be able to feel it as it overcomes that resistance and comes together with this guy then the plug component comes in a foil pouch you should open this before you get too far so that it's ready as soon as you're ready you can grab it The collagen is uh, lined up longitudinally inside um, the delivery system. This piece of plastic here is called the bypass tube. This covers the collagen and protects it from dislodgement during delivery. And when you are in that part of the procedure, this is what you want to grab the device by for loading into the back end of the sheath. This is called the bypass tube because it bypasses that hemostatic valve at the proximal end of the sheath. Okay, so once these things are all ready, you wanna hold pressure, or position your fingers to hold pressure. You're gonna do the sheath exchange, so the wire goes in. Holding pressure, the sheath comes out, you wanna maintain wire position. If too much came out, you can re-advance the wire until you have about 12 inches on the outside. Now this is a, a pro tip. <clears throat> Coil the wire once and hold with your thumb and forefinger. Grab the sheath and dilator by the tip and load these two together. With your finger still at the tip, pinch the wire and pull so that you don't lose wire inside the sheath and then slowly advance again. Pinch and pull a couple times until you have it, until you pull out enough slack that you can make it straight and you can advance it on the rail. If you don't make that little circle or you have the circle with too much extended, it's hard to load that thing. And if you barely load it and then try to straighten everything out, it'll recoil and bounce right back out of the sheath. Okay, so with that on the wire, <clears throat> you're still holding pressure in an overhand position. Advance your sheath and dilator down into the vessel. Okay, when you, when you or if you encounter any, <clears throat> any resistance, you may have to torque it back and forth, right and left, and that's okay to do as you advance. <laughs> So you advance far enough until you receive pulsatile flow. So there's a small hole at the proximal end of the, of the dilator. As long as you have this green arrow pointing up, that hole is pointing down. And uh, it will squirt pulsatile flow over the top of your hand. 
if you have this inverted, you could get it in the face. So just be careful with that. <clears throat> Once you have pulsatile flow, that means that those holes, as they lined up on the sheath and dilator, are inside the vessel. Now, we want to position the tip of the, of the sheath and dilator as close to the underside of the arteriotomy as possible, and the best way to approximate that is with those holes. So now we, don't, we know we're in, but we may have overcome so much resistance that we really hubbed the delivery system. <clears throat> we don't know how far in we are. So we gradually back the device out until we lose that pulsatile flow. And if you can see now how those holes have come just outside of my artery there, that, that's what's happening on the inside. Now I can't be getting flow. So the flow has stopped and then I ever so slightly advance until I have that good pulsatile flow again. That means that I'm back in the artery with the holes and that the tip of my sheath is positioned approximately one centimeter inside the vessel. <clears throat> At that point, since you're in, you don't have to be holding so much pressure with your occlusive hand. You can remove that. Take note of the letter at which the um, sheath indicates you know, your depth. It says angel seal here on the side. So it's just a kind of a, a marker to help you know and uh, assess how deep you are. In case it were to come out or, or move, you can see like that. So here I'm at about the S. I'm going to place my hand in the C position and squeeze the top of the sheath. And then this hand is going to stay fixed to the patient and holding the sheath for the rest of the delivery. So in the overhand, uh, with the right hand in the overhand position, I grab the dilator, I bend it down, I bend it up to dislodge it, and then I pull, squeezing the wire with my back fingers so that these guys all come together. Then I grab the collagen component by the bypass tube and I insert it through the valve. At this point it's going to start bleeding a little bit because we've broken that seal. So these next couple of moves need to be quick but you want to short stroke this guy in. If you were to grab the end and try to load everything at once you run the risk of, of kinking this uh, middle segment. So a couple short strokes in. Now we're going to hear the first click Okay. That means that we've exposed the foot plate into the vessel, but it's kind of floppy. The second click needs to come to the opposite way. So again, the left hand remains still. Second click back. And what that has done is it's lodged the foot plate up against the monofold in the sheath. The second uh, click, if you didn't hear it, you can also visually assess these green tabs inside the window should be below uh, the thing that makes the noise, which is those two little bumpers. Also, this white paint on the green section right here should be exposed. That can be seen on both sides. Some people tend to torque this back, so make sure you just do a straight pullback so that both sides engage at the same time. Now that you've got the second click back, this is when you can release with the left hand and you want to pull at a 45 degree angle with the right, you're going to feel resistance as the foot plate engages the underside of the arteriotomy. Okay, I'm going to add a little water here to get the collagen wet. Okay, you keep pulling. Sorry, I want it to collapse nicely. Okay, so you keep pulling. And what's happening is that suture is woven through the collagen through nine different holes. And the way that it is woven, as it's tightened, it's like a slip knot. And it pulls that collagen down towards the top of the vessel, like wringing out a mop. Okay, So it, it torques around itself, collapses down to the top of the vessel. You're going to keep pulling until you feel the second increase in resistance, which is about you know, you're almost a foot from the top of the patient. And at that point, this hand that you've left in the area should grab this green tube. It's called the tamper tube. You slide it forward so that it can complete the compression of that twisted collagen down to the top of the arteriotomy. 
And once you reveal the black dot along the suture, right above the green tamper tube, that means you've gone in far enough. So when you see the black dot, you hold this position, taut like a guitar string, for 10 seconds. With a little bit of forward compression on the green tube, after 10 seconds, you can release your tension, set the device down, and cut the suture. I got it. Oh, sorry. I got it. Has to be done with green. Are those sterile? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay, so there's a there's a very clear marker on the suture. It's called the clear stop. Right now, it prevents the tamper tube from coming off. The first cut should be made underneath that. Okay, and then before you take that tube off, one more time, assess the vessel. Make sure there's no hematoma forming, no bleeding. You can, because at this point, you can still compress a little bit with the tamper tube. When you're satisfied with that, remove the tamper tube. Holding the suture, push down on the skin, because you want to be able to cut the suture as low as possible so that when it recoils, it's drawn down into the tissue tract, and you make the second cut. Done.